latest QPR preview show on what has been a much more normal week in the world of QPR after the chaos of last week. But it's already the last show before another international break. Before we preview this week's match against Bristol City, let's reflect on Marty Fuentes' first match in charge of the R's. A 1-1 draw away at Rotherham. You were there, Dave. How was it? Yeah, it was a, it was a lot better, to be honest. The, the intent was there from the start, you know. It was kind of what you expected after what we'd heard about him. It was a lot more football play, a lot more passing out from the back. We just looked a much better team throughout. Um, we created more chances. It wasn't perfect. I thought first half we were a bit sloppy at the back and Hugo was causing us quite a few problems and they did have a few chances. But overall, I kind of agreed with him after the game. I was disappointed we didn't win. I thought we deserved to win the game. We, we, we played some really good stuff and it was good that after we got the first goal, we didn't just stop. We carried on creating chances and we really should have got that second goal. And even the last few minutes, we finished strong. We had chances again at the end. You think how often we go to games and we don't have a shot on goal all game. We had like six, seven pretty good chances at the weekend. I think you know, it was very encouraging, to be honest. Yeah, I think it was good on the manager's part that he came out after the match and said he was disappointed. He wasn't just full of praise for them, which is what Ainsworth was doing all the time, win, lose or draw. And I also thought it was good how when they got their goal, he made some changes and, went, and was able to wrestle back control of the game. We haven't seen that much from QPR sides. We obviously have to footnote it by saying it was against Rotherham. So as much as there was a lot of positives... With respect to them, just like us, they're one of the poorer sides in the league. But the general impression, like you've just been saying, is that if we are going to go down and we're going to struggle, at least go down and play in a little bit more like that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it was the most enjoyable game I've been to all season. Just nice to see us creating stuff. Just being on the front foot all the time, not just turning up going, oh, we're terrified of ourselves, what's going to happen to us. You know, have a go. We... Well, you're not playing Real Madrid here, you know, go and have a go and try and beat these teams. And, and we did. And, you know, it was a lot better. There's this plenty to work on, you know. You know, I thought, I thought they, were, I said they were a bit sloppy at the back at times. And, you know, again, we always say at the final pass and some of the finishes could be better, you know. Smith put one brilliant ball in for Dykes, which he got nowhere near. I couldn't believe he didn't get closer to that. And um, I thought Dixon Bonner probably could have done a little bit better with his chance. But, um. Overall, there was just a lot of positives to take out of the game, you know. After it's been so miserable for the last few months, it just felt like a fresh start of the weekend. Yeah, especially because he'd only been in, we said last week, he only really had two, two and a half days to try and implement what he wanted. So to make that much progress, it felt in such a short space of time, it did feel positive. And at least we stopped the losing streak because obviously it had been six defeats in a row prior to that. But it is still 10 games without a win now for QPR, two wins in 16 league and cup games. And it's another lead that we did give away against Rotherham as well. So as much as Fuentes may improve us on the pitch, something he's got to try and do is like instill a winning mentality in the players, isn't it? Like they've got to start getting over the line because this is the side now, we've been saying it, they've basically not known how to win for coming up for the best part of two years. He, he's got to do something to change that, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, we, we looked quite comfortable at 1-0 and then we just had five minutes where we got sloppy. They had a couple of little chances... Um, Richards give a poor header back. I mean, he's put it back in a danger area. We've had to give a free kick away. Just little sloppy things like that that they need to cut out and it's just let them back in the game. And apart from that, five, ten minutes in the second half where they had a few chances, Rotherham, we were pretty dominant. And, you know, it's frustrating not to come away from with, with a win when you play a lot better. But, yeah, like you said, they need to get that winning mentality because they're going to have to win quite a few games to get out of this. We're still, you know... <laughs> I'm saying we're all, it's all positive and we was all happy. But then you look at the league table, it's like, oh, we're still six points adrift. It's not great, is it? So, um, yeah. you know, they, they, you know, if they can just get that one win, I think it could really, you know, get them going. Yeah, when you're right, you're right as well. We need to probably win now as many as we lose. And we've probably only been winning one in every five or ten losses. So our ratio is going to have to improve massively. It is a tough job, but there's some good early signs. And our next chance to try and get a win on the board, of course, is on Saturday against Bristol City. Now, against Bristol City, strangely, there's been no draw between the sides since 2017. That's 12 matches with four wins for QPR and eight defeats. And oddly, Bristol City haven't drawn any of their last nine games this season. So statistically, you're looking at one of the sides grabbing three points. It's not ideal opposition, though, is it? They've changed their manager too. Nigel Pearson left, despite them being in a relatively comfortable position in the table feels like maybe a bad time to face them as a result 
Yeah, I mean, I was quite impressed with them towards the end of last season. I, you know, surprised they're not doing a bit better, to be honest. They didn't seem they sold a few players, didn't they? they didn't seem to invest too much in the summer. But um, yeah, I mean, you could have done with them <clears throat> wait until next week to get their new manager, really, couldn't we? You know, it's, it's a shame he's coming early, but um, you know, it's it's surely got to end this home run at some point, and you know, it's for me, it's all about us and how we play. If we can impose ourselves on them like we did at Rotherham at the weekend, get get ourselves. It was so important to get ourselves in front of home. Don't fall behind at home again. Get a bit of our know, positivity going from the crowd. Um, I think we stand a decent chance. Yeah, it won't be easy, obviously, but you know, I think we've got a good chance. You're right to mention the home record. We can't obviously not. And it felt like it was Gareth Ainsworth's Achilles heel throughout his whole reign because he could never get any momentum going during his tenure because he could never get a home win. It helps you to get the crowd on side, the players' confidence up. It's going to make such a difference for Fuentes if he can win this one, isn't it? Because it just changes the whole outlook of his reign by starting on the front foot. Yeah, it's massive. You've seen, with the, you know, we've been gone for a few managers recently, haven't we? And they've, they haven't started well at home, and then it's just got worse and worse and worse. So you need to get that win early, you know. And especially when we've got a little break as well, a couple of weeks break. So, it was, you know, so everyone's feeling a bit more upbeat about us at the minute, but you need to back that up with wins. And he was, I see he was right what he said after the game. We shouldn't just be satisfied with draws. We've got to be going for wins. And we've got to run the games when you see them on paper where they should be targeting wins from this game, these games. You know, again, I say it's not not going to be easy. You know, this run at home isn't great, but we've surely got to end it at some point. Yeah, they've got to get the monkey off the back because it's kind of like reach for the mute button here because here's all the depressing stats for you for the home record. 13 matches at home it is now without a win. And it was already a club record when it got to 11, so it just keeps on growing and growing. One win in nearly 13 months now at home, and we've not scored two in a match at home since last October. It is simply a monkey we have to get off our back because you're right to say we sent, mentioned it last week. There's like a feel-good factor around the club again. Everyone's looking forward to the game. If this is another 4-0 home defeat or 3-0 or whatever it may be that we've had a lot recently, we're back to square one straight away. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and, you know, although everyone's positive about this, it's only going to take a few defeats for people to say, why didn't we give it to Warnock? You know, you, you just know how people are. So it's important to get a home win as early as he can, you know, and it's a good opportunity to do that because they're not in amazing form at the minute. They've got a new manager who won't have been working with them for too long. So, you know, we've got to impose ourselves on them. Yeah. Back to Bristol City for one second. Rob Dickey, of course, went there in the summer and you couldn't script it that he scored the winner for them in at the weekend and in their previous win as well. So we obviously love letting players come back to haunt us. Surely not again. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't let him shoot from long distance. We know how good he is at that. Um, I hope, hopefully he doesn't come back to haunt us. But we've seen enough of him to know that he lacks a bit of pace. He's a good. I like Rob Dick. He's a good player, but he lacks a bit of pace. So, you know, if if Armstrong plays or Smith plays, get on him, running at him. You know, try and get him behind him. That's where you got to target. We saw teams target him every week when he played for us. So we've got to do the same here. Yeah, I was going to say, we've got enough coaches, obviously, at QPR who worked with Rob Dickey last season. We've mentioned Lyndon Dykes, you said at the start, where he was not quite at the races last week. Do you think this is one where, if Armstrong's fit, he starts because we know you can target Rob Dickey? Yeah, potentially. I thought he did quite well when he came on as well, Armstrong. You know, it, it might it might be one where they do try and target him, try and get him behind early. I, say you, I do think we need to get ahead in the game. We don't want to be... I think if Bristol City score first, I fear for us a little bit. So, you know, it's important to play with high energy at first and someone like Armstrong will get the crowd going. You know, he's due a goal, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he always gets the crowd. I mean, a goal at Loftus Road, still waiting for it, isn't he? Lyndon Dykes, though, three goals it is now in 12 months since he scored against Huddersfield on the 8th of November last year. To put that into perspective, Jamal Lowe scored the same amount of goals for QPR in 2023 as Dykes. And he last scored for us in March and left six months ago. Kenneth Powell has scored three goals this season from left back. Dykes, he is miles off where we need him to be, isn't he, for such a, a vital player? This is a big part of why we are where we are. We don't have enough goals in us. And he's our main centre forward, you know. Talking about Armstrong coming in, he's a young kid, really, who hasn't got much experience. Dykes needs to be getting 10, 15 goals, and he looks miles off getting that. He's only got one so far this year, and he? 
you know, and he just seems to have these spells where he doesn't score for like three months and then they get a couple and then he won't score for another three months. And you can't have that as your main forward. You know, he's been here a few years now and I don't, I've always said, I don't think they put enough crosses in the box for him, but then they watched last week. It's an absolutely perfect cross bang on his head and he got nowhere near it. So, you know, I find, I'm finding him a bit frustrating at the minute. Yeah, the problem is, you're right, he goes through these big month barren spells, but he used to at least score five or six before he went and one at the moment. He gets one and then he doesn't score for months. And I'd go as far as to say that if he doesn't get scoring soon, we're going to still go down regardless of what the new manager can improve because, like you say, you can play well, but if someone's not putting it in the net, you're going to get relegated. You mentioned Elijah Dixon Bonner before. Now, I said in jest last week that Sam Field was our only first choice midfielder available. But Dixon Bonner, on his first league start, really stepped up, made his mark. It would be cool, uh, cruel to drop him, wouldn't it? Yeah, he really took his opportunity. I thought he had a good game last week. You know, I've only seen like little bits of him haven't we, as a sub before. But I thought he took his chance well. You know, a bit, He was a bit sloppy in the first 20 minutes or so, but he grew in the game. and I, You know, I thought he did well. And... He probably should keep his place, really. You'd think um, Colback would probably come in as well, but with, um, I think Chair's suspended, isn't he, at the weekend? Yeah. You'd think he'll probably keep his place then. What about Dazelle? Because obviously Dazelle's back. He, they can't all probably fit in the midfield, even with Chair missing out. What <clears> midfield <throat> five would you expect? It's difficult, isn't it? But I think Dazelle's made a run for his own back with that stupid sending off the other week, and Dixon Bonner's played well and got the shirt. I'd probably go with. Dixon Bonner field and Cole back in the middle, play and move Willock out wide and you got Spiff on the other side. I think I'll probably go with that at the weekend. You know, I thought Willock did okay. He wasn't brilliant or anything at the weekend, but you know, you need to give him a run of games. Just give him like five, ten games in the team. Let him <clears throat> hopefully just gets his form back because <clears throat> we desperately need him to. Yeah, 100% on Chris Willock. He has to stay in the side regardless, really, of how he plays because he's never going to get his mojo back if he gets dropped again and only gets 20 minutes. just doesn't work. Uh, the impact that you mentioned at the start of the uh, new manager was how much more possession we had, and it was the main stat where we increased. We've gone from having about 37%. It was about 20% higher than that. But it was against the team in Rotherham who don't mind the opposition having the ball. It's going to be interesting to see, isn't it, against the Bristol City side who are more comfortable on the ball themselves, whether we see that jump again. Yeah, it will be, yeah. I think it'll be a, a lot closer in possession stats. But we just can't we can't do what we're doing under Rainsworth and just let a team have 70% of the ball all the time. <clears throat> I don't expect us to play like Man City or anything like that, but you need to have more of the ball if you're going to win a game. It's obvious, really, isn't it? It's just basics. And um, we had a lot more of it last week before we looked a lot better for it. And... It, it, I think it'd be quite a good game because they play some decent football as well, Bristol City. They're, they're not a bad side and um, it, it should be an entertaining one, I think. Yeah, I think it will be. And hopefully, like you say, we just try and play with the ball on the front foot and see how it goes. I was loath to bring him up, Taylor Richards, but you mentioned him before with his cameo. Uh, it was only his third appearance of the season, but he did play a part in us conceding the goal. Just think we'll see more of him after that. <laughs> I think we might do. On, on the ball, he's all right. He's got some nice touches, some good passes, but without it, I mean, he is quite hopeless. He looks like he hasn't played the game before. He, so the game just drifted past him. And um, when he had to go in the middle for a bit on Saturday, you know, he, he he just didn't seem to know what he was doing in there. It was quite frustrating watching him. I don't think he's going to be starting games, but I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him involved off the bench a bit more than he has been. Um, and he, he's got when he gets his chances, he's got to take them. You've seen Dox Dixon Bonner come in and he took his chance. He might get run in the side now. You can't come in and you know look all flash on the ball, but then give away a goal like he did at the weekend. You, you know, he, he needs to be a lot better. Yeah, I think the manager probably has to give him another chance because it's not he's our player, he's got a four year deal. At some point, we've got to try and get something out of him, and to just completely cast him aside again probably wouldn't do anyone any favors. Prediction time then. Uh, obviously, there's a well-known stat that Blackburn, Coventry and Sunderland have all won more matches at Loftus Road than QPR in 2023. Bristol City can be the latest name on the list. Is it going to happen? You know, I, I fear it's going to be a draw again, but surely we're going to win a home game eventually. So I'm going to go with a home win. I think it'll be close and we're like 2-1. But um, I'll go with a win. 
Yeah, if you keep saying that often enough, it will happen at some it point. It will happen eventually. <laughs> I'll be right eventually, will I? <laughs> Not for the last six months, but we'll keep trying. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just don't think it ha- helps us, Bristol City, having a change of manager right now because they're going to be saying the same kind of things as us, hoping for improvements, etc. And I do think our home record just keeps adding pressure on us all the time. I think, like you said at the start, it could be a draw. I think that's probably the most likely outcome, despite what I said before about the stats saying it doesn't happen between sides. And whatever happens, it's a big two weeks ahead for the manager because it's the last break in play until March. So whatever he's going to work on is his biggest opportunity to do so to leave us ready to attack the winter. We'll be back in a fortnight, ready to attack the winter ourselves because the fixtures come thick and fast as we head towards Christmas. Hopefully we can all head into the break happy. Thank you all for watching as always and come on you ours. We know who we are. You know who we are. We are QPR.